education program leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from Studio Bell. Why do some notes sound good together? Well, here's an instrument. I'm going to randomly place my finger somewhere on this string. Now I'm going to randomly place it somewhere else. Now how do these notes sound together? These notes do not blend very well together, so we call them a dissonant harmony. In fact, randomly choosing notes, most of the harmonies I get will be quite dissonant. But every once in a while, I'm going to pick two notes, and they are going to blend very well. They will produce a consonant harmony. So what's the difference? Why do some harmonies sound consonant, and some harmonies sound dissonant? Ratios. Last week, we used ratios, building rhythms off of a pulse. And this week, let's try an experiment. All we are going to do is use one string and divide it up into simple ratios to see what harmonies we get. This is very close to one of the first scientific experiments ever recorded. It was carried out by a person named Pythagoras. Look, I don't want to get too much into Pythagoras or what he did. All this history is over 2,500 years old, so it's kind of hard to figure out what's true. So just remember these three things. One, the works of Pythagoras were not created by one person, but a whole school of people working together, called the Pythagoreans. Two, the Pythagoreans thought the best way to understand the mysteries of the universe was to apply math and numbers. Third, Pythagoreans did not eat beans. For this experiment, Pythagoras used a box with a single string called a monochord. We're going to use this box, which has four strings, but we'll do all of our experimenting on just this one. To section this out into ratios, I will need a very high-tech device called a piece of string. You can do this on any stringed instrument. This works on a guitar, a banjo, a mandolin, a violin, a bass. So I want my piece of string to be the exact length of the part of this string that will vibrate, which is from the bridge up to here. Awesome. So we want to start with the simplest ratio possible, which is actually a one-to-one. -one. So I don't need my string yet. So a one-to-one -one ratio is the whole string compared to the whole string played again. So the one-to-one -one is the simplest ratio we can get, and when you hear those notes together, they blend extremely well. They are very consonant. A perfect unison. Very unexciting. Let's try the next simplest ratio, a two-to-one. So now I need to fold my piece of string in half. So if I measure from the top to here. So again, we're gonna compare two Two, one. Let's hear two. This is one. Well, that is very interesting. These notes blend very well together. In fact, they blend so well together that we give them the same note name. This would be a G. This would be considered a G. This creates an interval called a perfect octave. What's even more amazing is I have a frequency counter. The open string at the full length is vibrating about 98 times per second. Halfway point. That was about 196 times per second, which means the strings are vibrating at a two to one ratio. I can take this new distance and fold it in half again. It's a G again, 392 vibrations per second. Every time you divide the string in half, it ends up vibrating at twice the speed. 
and they blend together extremely well. So a one-to-one -one ratio gave us a perfect unison. A two-to-one ratio gave us a perfect octave. Now let's try the next simplest ratio, a three-to-two. So to get a three-to-two ratio, I'm going to have to fold my string three times. So I've divided the string into three equal sections. And now I want to try a three to two ratio. All three sections together. Now let's compare that to two sections vibrating. So a three to two ratio gives us another very consonant interval called the perfect fifth. Wonderful. My G is still vibrating 98 times per second. And my D's at about 146. Again, the strings are vibrating at a three to two ratio. This is getting spooky. When I was doing the two to one ratio, I kept dividing it into two to ones and I kept getting octaves. But with my three to two, I could take this as my new three and fold this three times. So it gave me another perfect fifth above the old perfect fifth. You can keep stacking these three to twos and what you end up with is something called a circle of fifths. But let's keep folding and find some more intervals. Four to three. Now Pythagoras and friends did not invent these intervals. Humans had already found consonant harmonies and collected notes together to build scales. The patterns already existed, but the Pythagoreans asked why, and they used numbers to help them figure it out. And their results were really good. This had a huge influence on the development of science and philosophy. You may have noticed science still uses math to describe all sorts of things. Yeah. Okay, here's one of the spookiest things. I've talked about overtones in a lot of videos. So let's bring up the spectrogram for a moment and look at this note. So within the note I just played, 97 vibrations per second, the first overtone, 192 hertz. Next overtone, 290 hertz. 386. These patterns are contained within every note. I hope this was an interesting look at how math helped humans unlock the mysteries of harmony. Next week, we'll look at one more piece of technology that plays with ratios and shows us that harmony and rhythm are really two sides of the same coin. Till then, happy exploring. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate.